Market faces a big test this week. 140 of the S&P 500 companies are scheduled uh, to report, including the likes of Caterpillar, Amazon, Apple, McDonald's, and Microsoft. And uh, many expect companies to continue withdrawing guidance, no doubt. Join us now, Anastasia uh, Amoroso, global investment strategist at J.P. Morgan Private Bank. And uh, Anastasia, I, I guess that the reaction that the market has to these, you can't just say, well, the, the bad news is already out. No one's expecting anything good. It's going to be probably, you know, you're going to look at these things and go, wow, that's really awful. But in your view, it, it's not going to be monolithic. There's going to be some, some numbers that don't look that bad versus some that just look abysmal. And the ones that don't look so bad, you might focus on those, those areas. Can you tell us which ones those are? That's right. Exactly, Joe. I think on the broad market level, you're right. You're going to see more downside in terms of consensus or in his expectations. That's at least the history of the last week or so is we've seen companies not beat as they typically beat. The average beat is actually a miss. And then only 65 percent of the companies are beating and the typical average about 70. So because of that, for the broad market, we can see some downside in earnings expectations. But as you pointed out, there is definitely pockets of opportunity opportunity that you will have more companies in the average beat. And yes, I'm looking to tech and I'm looking to healthcare. They have been the winners year to date. And I say stick with those winners because these are the companies, these are the sectors that are delivering above average, above benchmarks earnings growth. And if anything, they've only been strengthened by the current environment. So to be fair, some of this is pretty consensus and some of these sectors are pretty well loved. Uh, but once again, if these are the companies that are able to grow earnings above the benchmark, and by the way, some of the future upside from new applications is not priced in, that's why we, uh, we continue to like uh, tech and healthcare. So Anastasia, that just you know, tops down and, and macro viewpoint, not, not individual uh, sectors, do, do you... Do you believe the market looks out nine months or so, the stock market? And if we're starting to see, uh, you know, some thawing in what's going on over in Europe, even in Italy, in, in different uh, countries, in Spain, you know, kids are going back out. So there's some reopening of economies around, and we're starting to see it slowly here in the United States. Do you think that the market needs another big leg down based on the earnings we see over the next three weeks? I don't think it need a bit, needs a big leg down. Uh, I am a little cautious on earnings, of course, but to your point, Joe, it is being offset by the reopening of the economy conversation. You're right, the market looks ahead. And in fact, we know that on average, the market troughs three and a half months before the end of the recession. So if we think that the end of this recession is going to be by the end of June, because that's when we project that 80 percent of the states are actually going to open up. So it makes sense that we likely have seen the low for this particular crisis uh, already. So we know that the economy is not going to snap back to 100 percent level of activity. We probably have to wait a year or two for that. Uh, but we know that earnings can actually have a V-shaped recovery from this year to the next. We've seen that, for example, during the global financial crisis, even though the GDP itself did not recover. Uh, so, yes, I think markets lead the economy and those sectors of tech and healthcare. I suspect, uh, will lead the economy as well. I mean, it's pretty unbelievable, Anastasia. And, 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 you know, if you've done this a long time, maybe you're not surprised. But it, to, to look at what we're seeing, 16 percent unemployment, let's say, and a, ne a negative GDP number that we haven't seen since the Depression, and the stock market is 16 percent off its all-time highs. Now, that would normally, you know, that would look to someone like it's a, there's a total disconnect and we need to go, I don't know what the fair value would be, but that looks, that looks totally out of whack. Does it not? I would I would say there are a couple of reasons why it's not totally out of whack. And the first reason for that is, yes, you're right, there's a massive gap that has been left by the shutting down of the economies and the spike in unemployment rate. But that massive gap is being plugged in, is being offset uh, by the monetary and fiscal policy. So if we look at the amount of loan guarantees and bond purchases and just 
you know, paychecks, just checks going to uh, uh, to companies and consumers, there go a long way to plug in this massive gap that has been left. So I think one of the reasons why we've seen the S&P multiple move materially higher uh, since the March 23rd low is because it's pricing in a good, a good degree of policy success. Okay. Uh, and I do think that's, that's warranted. Uh, the other thing is the markets do look uh, what's going to happen with the economy in the next quarter and the quarter after that and next year. And this is why it is so important for states to actually open up in May and June, because that's what consensus expects. Expect. Right. Most GDP consensus estimates out there expect right. a second half recovery. So to the extent that we deliver, I think we're in good shape. But if this becomes a more prolonged reopening a process, then we may have, be having some downside.